Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to our Avondi Globe Live uh, from Les Sables alone. It's blowing uh, 30, 40 knots outside just now. A little bit of a volte face, a change with the uh, Pacific where it's extremely light. The leaders, it's all about dealing with a monster high pressure system. Yannick Bestaven is looking like he might escape. Yeah, no one really seems to know down there. Uh, all the time the weather is particularly light, but we could all see a little bit of a regrouping, perhaps even a restart. Passing places, well, Benjamin Dutra has taken a place uh, last night and today he's a few miles now ahead of uh, King Jean, uh, Jean Le Cam. Uh, and uh, actually this group is uh, also compressing, so uh, the uh, tension is mounting all the time. Our guest today is one of our uh, all-round uh, gurus, uh, Johan Richom, twice winner of La Solitaire, a winner of uh, Class 40 in the Route de Rome. Johan, how are you today? I'm good, uh, I'm good. Thank you for inviting me. Good. Um, what's your take on what's happening at the front of the fleet then just now? It's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, we can see there's a, almost a cut uh, with uh, Yannick Bestaven uh, trying to get away. Um, he might do it. We'll see. We'll talk about it. But it's definitely a difficult uh, moment for uh, Charlie Dalin and Thomas Ruyant, who are most likely going to be uh, getting caught up in this uh, you know, light winds. And, and, uh, and a regroup, as you said, will happen probably. Great. We'll come back to you in one minute, uh, Johan. We're going to look at the uh, standings uh, at midday. And uh, Yannick Bestavin's doing about nine knots uh, early on today. He is uh, leading by 97.8 miles ahead of Charlie Dallin. Thomas Riong is doing 8.4 knots. Uh, he's 177 miles behind the leader. Uh, Boris Herman, uh, we know, has been slow. He is uh, 343 miles behind uh, Bestavin. Uh, but he's only 10 miles ahead of uh, Benjamin Dutroux. Dutroux, as I said, has passed uh, Jean Lecam to take fifth. Lecam is five miles behind him. Then it's uh, extremely close be behind as well. Uh, 11 miles uh, to Damien Sagan. Mag Sagan is uh, 11 miles ahead of uh, Isabel Josk. Josk is 41 miles ahead of uh, Giancarlo Padotti. And Padotti is only 130 miles ahead of uh, Maxime Sorel. So that uh, top 10, loads of tension, loads of excitement. Louis Burton trying to catch up. He's doing 14 uh, knots uh, this morning. Uh, further down the table, looking at Alan Rura, our Swiss skipper of the internationals. He's doing 17.2 knots, going quite well. Then the, uh, the third group, if you want to call them, uh, Arno Boissier, Pip Pair, Stefan Le Dereson, Didac Costa and Manu Cousin, all close together. Pip Pair uh, in uh, 17th, uh, Didac Costa in 19th. And Pip has made uh, consistent gains over, uh, over Didac, who, of course, his birthday was yesterday, went past uh, Cape Lewin uh, yesterday evening. Kojira Shiraishi doing almost 20 knots, uh, making 439 miles over 24 hours, which I think is probably one of the biggest distances uh, in the fleet just now. Miranda Merrin in 23rd, uh, Clement Giraud 24th, uh, Alexia Barry all close together, uh, and Ari Husella routing up in the north is a comfortable, safe route. He's doing 13.4 knots. And Sebastian Destremo, we spoke with him, he's sailing in champagne conditions, albeit uh, in uh, lighter breezes. He's uh, heading towards Australia. So, uh, Johan, uh, what's, your, what's, uh, what's the outcome going to be in this, uh, this high-pressure system? Well, the outcome is that there could be a break uh, in between the leader and the, and the followers. Uh, you know, he, he's in front of it and he's moving with it, whereas the other ones are falling behind and are going to get stuck. It's like a wall, but it's slowly moving. So that entire group for me, from um, VNB La Mayenne to uh, Charlie Dallin, is going to be, uh, you know, pretty close. You know, we're going to have uh, eight or nine boats uh, within 100 miles uh, by this weekend. And what's Best Evans prospects then? Well, it's, it's a bit difficult for him because he's got another low pressure coming down um, around this time Saturday. And it uh, depends how strong and how it's positioned and stuff like that. For now, it's, it seems all right. So it's going to give him a, you know, a nice uh, probably 200, 300-mile uh, lead or something like that. We're going to have a look at the, the weather situation with our, our weather files, and I'll come back to you in a second. Well, the weather situation this Wednesday, we really are focusing mainly in terms of the sporting story on the uh, lead just now. We're watching uh, Yannick Bestaven trying to get out of the high-pressure system. Now, we know that if he can get clear and into the stronger breeze, it could really increase his lead by many hundreds of miles. If he can get up to the, meet this uh, low-pressure system uh, in the next few days, then he can get an express train to the east towards uh, Cape Horn. Uh, behind him... Yeah, 
is uh, Charlie Dallin here. He's very much uh, trying to stay on uh, Best Avon's track, just playing the percentage game a little bit. And uh, Toma Riong in third has uh, taken a slightly more riskier option going up to the north and has found himself, according to this tracking, uh, towards the centre of the high pressure system momentarily. But uh, we'll see how he gets out. And if we look a little bit uh, further, just to bring uh, Jean Lacam and uh, Boris Herman towards me, we can see they're heading up to the north. Their, uh, their plan is to try and route up and get to the, high pre the uh, low pressure system as well uh, in due course, but they're very much in a more of a, a hunting position. They have the option to stay at the back of the high pressure. As say, it's moving east, and so it's slightly easier for them, and particularly more so for the boats down here. They don't have to go as far north and have a, a straighter passage along the exclusion zone. So that's the situation for the, uh, the leaders. And if we look now at this one, this is uh, for the boats towards the back. Just briefly, La Fabrique, uh, Alan Rura. Uh, we have uh, Arno Boissé, we have um, Stefan de Raison and uh, Pip here. All underneath this high pressure system, uh, having uh, decent breezes, a little bit more here for this group. And then uh, no great uh, weather systems behind in terms of lows really for the boats behind. They've got a fairly straightforward uh, few days ahead. So, Ewan, what, what are the options then for Toma Riong in particular and uh, Charlie in terms of their positioning and, and how they, they're kind of in between the boats behind and trying to chase? What, what do they have to do? Yeah, just as you said, they have two options, uh, either go north or south, but don't stay in the middle, basically. If you go north, you're going, uh, you know, upwind. Uh, as you said, it's a bit risky, but, I mean... It, all in all, it doesn't change much in the end. They're going to get caught up. They're going to slow down, and they're going to have to restart it behind this high pressure, which is moving east uh, a little bit faster than them. So, I mean, to be fair, they're just going to end up with the group behind whatever they do. Uh, so it's just a game of being patient and restarting again. Um, yeah, and then, as you said, for the group behind, Damien and stuff like that, they've been catching up because they've got really good wins. Jolicam has already gotten you know, much slower today, and um, this is all going to bunch up really uh, for the next uh, two, three days. It's going to be a slow, um, slow Pacific for 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 now. Indeed, and what are what are the sailors using in terms of uh, in terms of tools to monitor the the uh, the movement of the high pressure? Well, they, they get the, um, the weather files uh, twice every day at least, um, and some of them may have two different models. Everyone has uh, the American GFS models, which is uh, free, and the European one is a bit more expensive for this race. Not everyone has it. Uh, so basically, they just play with that. But the thing is, pretty much every time we get a new model, uh, we get a different scenario, uh, maybe not for the next two or three days, but after that, it changes, you know. So I think it's, uh, it's a lot of work for them to plan uh, where to go. Uh, you know, you could decide in the morning to go north and then then kind of realize that it's a bad choice uh, by uh, the afternoon files, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it's probably a lot of hours on the on the chart table uh, doing a lot of routing, doing a lot of uh, scenarios as well. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough situation. I think it's much tougher for Charlie and Thomas to see Yannick uh, flying away. I did a little bit like a, a, a solitaire, a Figaro race in terms of the amount of routing you have to do and following the array. Uh, the uh, your uh, rivals all the time yes i think that's what charlie was saying he said uh, this is more like a big figure or leg than a than a vendee globe because usually you get people spread out over thousands of miles days apart and not really grouped together you know and we have what like 14 boats within a thousand miles so this is amazing you know it's a real uh, a real competition around the world and it's uh, it's fascinating to follow it is indeed. We're going to have a quick look at uh, Boris, Boris Herman. You know, we talk about light winds, but this was uh, Boris Herman's little video that sent us uh, earlier on. And, you know, that could be the med at this point, couldn't it? It's just glassy calm. And this is the uh, South Pacific at, uh, I think they're like uh, 48, uh, 50 degrees south. Yeah, this is a bit unusual for sure. Uh, uh, looks like nice weather, which is, which is good, because... Huh? Uh, it can also be very, very cloudy and rainy uh, all the time down there. So it's nice for them to have some good weather. But uh, that looked really, really light for sure. And I mean, you can easily understand that if uh, if the the high pressure is moving with them, they can't do anything about it. Huh? They just get wind uh, when the, 
the high pressure decides uh, that it's time to get some wind, but uh, it's going to take a few days for that high pressure to clear away. Listen, we spoke with uh, Boris earlier on in the day on, on Visio, and Boris gave us his, uh, his picture, his scenario just now on board Sea Explorer Yacht Club de Monaco. So you're, you're having a busy evening, Boris. Uh, yes, I just had another phone call with Germany, and I'm hesitating to pack. Uh, so it's probably a good thing that we have this call, so hopefully the wind turns back left and it saves me two tacks. It's, I'm in the uh, in in light winds here. It's really like totally stopped sometimes and turning right, left, uh, 80 degree shift. Uh, welcome to the uh, light wind patch, patchy zone. And uh, Boris, we all want to know what's going to happen. Yes, I can say you exactly. Um, <laughs> the uh, high pressure doesn't let, let us any choice other than um, heading north uh, and do, or, or, or doing whatever we want. Uh, we just get stuck to the western frontier uh, corner of this high pressure, and we can only advance east as much as the high pressure moves and lets us go. There's no way to turn around it in the south, in the middle, or on the top. So um, we could almost go in cruising mode and just let this thing move east a bit and then start racing again. But uh, it's not so much in my nature. <laughs> that's, that's my analysis. I don't think from where we were yesterday or where we are today, we could dive underneath it or do cross it somehow. Uh, yeah, that's that's the situation, and the situation for the three ones in front, I think Yannick Westerven will will head out. He will make a thousand miles on everyone else. Charlie, I don't know. I didn't check, but Thomas, I think, will be stuck in the high as well. Maybe. So if, if the three of them manage to go, then that would mean um, we have a massive gap between the podium and the, the aft, aft fleet. And that would be a bit more boring for everyone to watch, I guess. <laughs> I guess it would. And how, how are you feeling today? Uh, despite the high pressure uncertainties and despite uh, being slow, etc., I I was doing okay, not too stressed about it, and uh, actually enjoying the warmth, the sunshine, the peacefulness, uh, the colors of the sea, the sunset, and... Um, if you now just could send me a 45, <laughs> then I would be absolutely a happy man. So indeed, uh, Boris Herman, uh, looking for a little bit more breeze. So now 250, he's 250 miles behind uh, Charlie Dallin. It's quite nice to contrast the two and their, uh, their demeanours, their approaches just now. And this is Charlie er earlier on today. Hey, bonjour, c'est Charlie sur Apidia. Bon. Le vent léger est là. C'est parti pour quelques jours euh, pas simples, on va dire. Euh, J'espère que je vais trouver euh, un petit euh, trou de souris pour, euh, pour me, dégager, me décaler vers l'ouest, euh, pour gagner dans l'ouest le plus, le plus vite possible. Euh, voilà, c'est vrai que c'est assez incroyable hein, de se retrouver euh, 55 sud là. Donc, euh, Dans ces conditions. Ah, c'est beau, c'est sûr. Hein. Bon, on va pas vite, mais c'est beau. Regardez ce paysage. Au milieu de l'océan Pacifique. Voilà, si le... Je pense que si le vent des globes va se terminer à cette vitesse, je pense que je devrais arriver au Sable d'Olonne entre le 14 juillet et le 15 août, toi. Voilà. So Charlie Darling on uh, on a PVA. Johan, your your thoughts on Charlie? He seems to be a different person since his uh, since his damage. Uh, um, he probably yeah he probably has a bit of a different mindset because he really believed I think that uh, it was a uh, game over for him. Um, probably gave up a lot of energy as well, fixing that problem. Um, so it's kind of a second chance for him. Uh, I mean, 
mentally he probably sees that it's uh, he, there's nothing he can do. You know, he he's gonna be slow. He's gonna, as he says, he's gonna try to find a a tiny hole uh, of which to get out of this high pressure first. Uh, try and uh, and uh, to limit the the you know the distance with Yannick, but there's not much he can do about it. So there's no. There's no point in getting all worked up about it. You know, he might as well save his energy, uh, sail well, and uh, once the wind is back, uh, be uh, full on, you know, back to full pace. Uh, so it's it's kind of tough for him, but the route, you know, it's going to be a long, long Van der Globe yet. Uh, it's uh, still a long road to the Horn and a long road to uh, France. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my impression of him before was there was a lot of nervous energy and he, he seemed to push himself to become much tireder. I don't know whether that's more in the, in the DNA of the Figaro racer or whether that's just Charlie, but he, he seems much more resolved now. Yeah, I think he's, he's more relaxed. Uh, he, I mean, I knew him well because we were in the same team uh, in the Figaro for two years. And um, yeah, he was, uh, he was very stressed uh, about all the, you know, the competitions and stuff. And uh, I think, yeah, he's got, a, um, he's got a different mindset now. He's more relaxed, uh, um, more, f you know, his, his focus is different as well. You know, he's had a kid and uh, that changes a few uh, perspectives as well. And it does help with these kinds of, uh, of races. And, uh, and Boris Herman, he's, he's kind of almost the opposite, opposite way in terms of the mindset. He's just always very even and uh, he's sailed a, a super, uh, super race so far. Well, that's what he shows us, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, he's, he's sailed a really good race. I think, I mean, to be fair, that entire group has been quite lucky. Uh, they've sailed well, but the weather, you know, is 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 making them look really good because the, the leaders with a 2016 scenario would be thousands of miles ahead, you know. So, you know, I mean, congrats to them. They're, they've been sailing well. Uh, but it's uh, it's a race where we cannot see the potential of the leaders. So, and what's your kind of takeaway in terms of uh, you know looking ahead to the next race for yourself? What, what, how does this race influence your own thinking? Well, my thinking was already a little bit different uh, in terms of the foil choices that they made because I did feel like they didn't make choices for um, you know heavy weather conditions and uh, really rough sea states and stuff like that. There are more, more boats made for flat water. And I thought that was kind of a weird, you know, design and, and just a few of them had some uh, all around foils. Um, but again, I mean, I'm not the one, you know, I'm not someone who will say that uh, th those, you know, foiling boats aren't so fast. They are really bloody fast. It's just that the weather hasn't allowed them to be fast. And it's it's really bad luck. and. And you know now they're a week behind the 2016 record, which is highly unlikely because these boats, some of the times, are 10 to 20 percent fast, faster than Armel Leclerc was. So this isn't showing anything about speed potential. So what what boat would you be choosing then, or what would you be doing your own, or what's your what's how is this going to influence the the Amoka class for the for the next race? Um. Yeah, I think uh, what's good is we've had a few designers already designing boats for this generation, and uh, one of them has shaken up a little bit the the scene, which is uh, Sam Manoa with a kind of a scow hull plus a very different design in the foils. Um, I think we've saw we've seen a lot of people go for really light foils, really thin foils uh, that on paper work well, but. Um, you know, you need, this is a Van de Globe. This isn't a Formula One race. This is a, a four by four race, you know. Uh, you need to go up and down around the waves, uh, slam the boat as hard as you can. And it's it's hard to to push some of these boats, boats that have been built, you know, so fragile. So I think, you know, it's a good way to remember that we need some really strong boats, but you also need a boat that goes well in all conditions. I'll come back to you in one second, but uh, you uh, you alluded to uh, Armel Tripon's uh, L'Occitane, the Sam Manwar design, and we did have uh, Armel, he's having a little bit of a pause, he's had three weeks of really good fast sailing, and he's had a little bit of lighter breeze, and this was Armel Tripon earlier today. I'm fine, it's good, it was a really good day. It, it looks a little bit quieter today than what you've had. Yes, in fact, the wind... Uh, is decreasing, and uh, 
I think it will be uh, a little bit tricky this night with uh, light wind and uh, down wind to pass uh, through, and uh, and then uh, tomorrow the wind uh, will be uh, increasing again. No? But it's it's good to get a, a little break just now because you've had three weeks of really good wind going fast. Yeah, sure. Uh, just before, because um, uh, it was very really fast, very really speed, very really noisy, and uh, a little bit stressful. And uh, so I uh, the impression to to change the phrase and uh, to to have a break. Yes. Uh, so have a good night, perhaps. I hope so. And uh, and uh, start again with a new new start with a boat around me. It's uh, yeah, it's the beginning of Pacific. It's a new start, yeah, a new race. Perfect. Tell us a little bit. What have you discovered about your boat? Everybody is interested in in your boat. Oh, my amazing boat. Your amazing boat. It's uh, it's, it's an amazing. incredible boat. It's uh, yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah, I'm a lucky guy, you know. <laughs> you are indeed. Now, what what would be in terms of weather, Armel? What would your perfect Christmas present be for the Pacific? Uh, I would like a big uh, big swell, big waves with a long period to do many surfs. And um, with a uh, west wind, yeah, on down wind. Perfect. And uh, <laughs> do a Pacific on uh, 12, 12 days, for example. <laughs> so Armel Tripon giving us a very comprehensive insight into the uh, performance of his uh, of his uh, scow bow de Sam Manwar design. Johan, have you managed to to monitor the progress of uh, of Armel and, and learn a little bit about the performance of the boat on the race, or is it really just He's not uh, not had the chance to push it too hard. No, I think as you said, he's had some great a great three weeks uh, since uh, Saint Helena. Basically, um, he's uh, yeah he's made a lot of gains on the front. Again, we have to say that the front boats are really slow because of the weather, but he's made some really good gains. And I actually have him about two and a half days behind at the Horn. You know, so he isn't going to be that far from the leaders, depending on what weather they get in the Atlantic after that. Um, so he, it might be, you know, his luck might be about to turn because he, he obviously had some breakages in the beginning of the race that have put him uh, quite far behind, and he might be able to uh, to get himself a pretty good result, you know, if uh, he keeps on sailing like that. So, Johan, come Friday and Santa Claus comes to your house, which Imoka would you like? <laughs> the one I want to design, not the one I see here. Um, Go on, then. No, no, a, more. a lot of them are good. I mean, there are some good ideas all around. Um, it's definitely, uh, it's what I've, what I've always thought and what I've seen with the Class 40 is that uh, the, um, uh, you have to design the boat around the skipper, you know. You have to know the way you want to sail. And then you can um, you can build the boat around that so that you have a good match between the skipper and the boat. So I'm I'm giving you your your dream budget. Who who use who's designing your boat? I'm not going to reveal that. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me to keep. Good. Well, uh, listen. Thanks so much for joining us uh, again. Once again, what's your plans for Christmas? I believe you've got your hands full. Yeah, I'm up in the mountains, you can see behind. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got the kids around. Sorry, she just walked in. Uh, but we're at the mountains enjoying, uh, you know, this, the snow. And uh, and it's uh, quite a, kind of refreshing from what we've all been living through and uh, and the, maybe the next few months ahead. So it's a breath of fresh air for uh, at least a week. And you have some sailing plans, do you? Uh, yes, we're uh, racing uh, the the Ocean Race Round Europe race with uh, the Mercury Foundation, and we're starting training in a month. So it's uh, it's going to be full on for that. So that's going on ahead. Well, listen, thank you so much so much for joining us. Uh, hopefully, you'll join us again over the course of the race, uh, and uh, you have a good Christmas uh, to you and all your family. Okay, same to you. Talk to you soon. So that's uh, Johan Risch, and we're just going to finish with uh, very briefly with uh, Sebastian Destremo, who's uh, heading towards uh, Australia. He's got his problems. Uh, he's talking about returning to the uh, Esperance Bay, 
a little bit of deja vu. That's where he went in the last race and repaired. He's hoping that he can repair, but he's also realistic enough to realise that he may have to uh, have some help and, uh, and make a, a more permanent repair, taking on uh, equipment and uh, things from, uh, from on land. My boat is, um, is uh, limping to, towards Australia, and, uh, and I'm very lucky to have this kind of weather to, 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 to carry on. So hmm. what, what's your plan then? You're going to stop in this uh, southwest Australia? Look, um, at the moment, the situation is this. The boat, as it is now, cannot, well, cannot, I shouldn't say cannot, but it would be very, very difficult to complete the Vendée Globe uh, as she is now. Now, we have on board as the spears mm -hmm. um, because I have a very serious issue with uh, the hydraulic pump of, of my uh, automatic pilot. Very, very, very serious issue. I'll fix, I'll fix what I have, whatever I have to fix and then sail off again, uh, if that's the answer. Um, but for, for now, that's not the, well, let's say, let's say that for now, that's the answer, but we're working bloody hard to, to not take this option. I prefer, I love the option of trying to go back to West Prince Bay and, and, and fixing whatever I need to fix in this beautiful place mm -hmm. um, and, and then sail off again. You know, it's a, I mean, okay, it's a deja vu, I agree, but it brought me luck last time, you know, and, um, and this time I, I again need luck. You know? Indeed. And, and uh, uh, for our Anglo-Saxons... Yeah. Translate the name of the bay. Es the, the Esperance Bay is the, the Bay of Hope, of Good Hope, I exactly. guess. Exactly. Bay of Good Hope, Esperance Bay. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a lovely word, you know. And, um, An appropriate... and again, you know, like the, the word, the name. Of, yeah, 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 yeah. The name of the bay plus the fact that I used it last time and it brought me so much luck. Well, I have to look at it. <laughs> In a, you know, I have to look at it. Good, and, Seb. And, and it's on my way anyway, you know, like Tasmania, it's on my way. So there you go, man. So our best wishes to uh, Sebastian Destremo. Fingers crossed you can make some kind of repair and carry on in the race. But for sure the adventure will continue for, uh, for Seb. So that's all the time we have uh, today for our Vendée Globe Live in English. Uh, any questions for our guest tomorrow, who is Marcus Hutchison, the project manager for Thomas Riong's uh, linked out team, do post them on our Facebook, uh, Twitter or indeed on Instagram. Join us tomorrow.